This episode is sponsored by Grow Therapy. Grow Therapy was founded on the belief that quality mental health care should be accessible. It makes finding an in-network therapist easy. Go to growtherapy.com to find your match and let insurance pay for your therapy. Welcome to a place where you'll leave feeling whole. The Counseling Podcast brings at-home counseling right to you, focusing on self-care, self-expression, and breaking down barriers. Dr. Jacqueline and Dr. Stokes bring over 20 years of combined experience and a new sense of style to the word counseling. The two use humor and lighthearted conversation to explore these deeper feelings. Let's take the stigma away from counseling together. We are extremely pleased uh, to have our guest, Hector Ventura, licensed clinical social worker, uh, here with us today. Um, so welcome, Hector. Hector, what are you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, I'm a licensed clinical social worker, as you mentioned, licensed in Florida, Texas, and Virginia. Uh, I've been doing private practice for about a year. So uh, definitely, it's been uh, quite the experience. I started uh, right around the time that my daughter was born. I want to say like a little bit before, uh, definitely a huge motivator. But um, yeah, glad to be on today. Excellent. And I know there's a, there's a couple areas of, um, of specialization that you, that you practice. Um, tell us about some of those areas that you, you focus on in your clinical practice. Yeah. Um, I specialize on uh, men's mental health is something that I uh, work with a lot, uh, specifically men who um, suffer, who struggle from uh, like imposter syndrome, uh, trauma. Uh, grief is also uh, another area that I work with. Uh, a lot specifically with men. Um, so yeah, those are just kind of like some of the main focus points, but I see a little bit of everything in my private practice, but I'd say a good percentage of the people I see are men. That's so important. You know, men's mental health. I think this is a, very rarely do you hear the word men's and mental health gonna yeah. use, uh, in, in conjunction with each other. Tell us a little bit about what you've noticed with men's mental health, some of those areas that they struggle with, um, what they're, some of the issues that they're presenting with. Yeah, um, I'd say uh, an area of struggle that I've observed has been uh, just the stigma around just mental health in general. Um, and specifically, like stigma uh, that I've seen uh, with men has been uh, just uh, being able to talk right about your emotions, uh, feeling that it's okay that you know that that you can open up and and not be judged because there's always that stereotype uh, that you know men have to be strong, uh, you know you can't cry, can't talk about your emotions. So you know whenever I talk to people in therapy, I tell them this is just a conversation. You know we're just talking. You know we're talking about you and how to take care of you. Uh, so I do, you know, my best to to try to normalize the conversation. So that's how I usually approach uh, my sessions with people. I'm curious, in the men that come to you, are they feeling like they're pushed by people in their life to come see a therapist, or do they do it on their own? Yeah, that's a good point, right? Uh, I'd say some cases, like whenever it's couples, it's the the partner, right, that's uh, pressuring. Uh, the the patient right to seek help. Um, sometimes uh, you know whether they're there together right for a couple session or maybe they're you know they come in for an individual session but then they're like oh you know my partner really uh, uh, brought this up to me so um, I see a little bit of both um, but definitely um, I'd say just trying to normalize the conversation whether you are pressured or not. Uh, I try to just promote the the overall benefit, right, uh, to having a conversation and getting help. Yeah, it's that idea of like whatever gets them in the door, right? And yeah. I think that, you know, and I think that a, a lot of men really do struggle, you know, going back to that point about the stigma. I mean, I think it's really hard for men to understand that it's okay to feel, it's okay to, you know, have certain thoughts, it's okay to have certain experiences, where yeah. maybe, you know, men don't, they don't, they don't always have to have the answer. And I, and I think it goes back to some of those like um, cultural things that we have um, and, and in the United States and all across the, the globe where, you know, men can't feel it's the, I think of the, 
the sayings like suck it up and walk it off um, uh, yeah. and these concepts. So how do you take them? Uh, let's say you get, you know, um, uh, a, a guy who has, you know, who's kind of absorbed that culture and he comes into your office and maybe he's a little afraid to open up. What do you do to sort of get in there and help him um, with self-exploration and things like that? Yeah, um, definitely at the beginning, I focus more on building a rapport, right? The therapeutic relationship is, is super important. Um, you know, I can't expect someone who's never been in therapy before, who's never even talked about their emotions to, to their loved ones, right? To just like right off the gate, you know, start opening up about their deepest, you know, darkest secrets, their traumas, their insecurities. So I focus more on you know building rapport uh learning more about uh who they are as a person how they describe themselves um that kind of thing things that they enjoy doing how they're currently coping right and also try to establish a sense of direction so um i incorporate a variety of approaches but i'd say uh just to provide kind of like a an overview i'd say i'm primarily just solution focus like i i want to know okay like you're here great you know i'm here to listen i'm here to support but also like what would make our conversations helpful for you like what are you hoping to achieve through this um and then just build from there uh obviously easier said than done right doesn't all happen in one session but it gets the you know kind of the the, the conversation going right that's a very practical approach, right? I think, and, and, and you're right, you know, especially with a lot of men, when they come in, they're not going to go deep. They don't know how to, they've never done that, right? So it's more yeah. or less, hey, what's the presenting issue? Let's figure out a solution. Let's figure out a path uh, to get there. But going back to the idea that you had mentioned earlier, it's, it's a conversation, right? It's a relationship and a conversation, and we start there. Uh, you had also mentioned some uh, specifically imposter syndrome with men. Um, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so that's uh, another area that I like to work on uh, in terms of just uh, like social media, like a lot of the content that I push um, definitely has to do with that because um, I'd say just the people that I work with, right? Uh, a lot of men uh, find themselves uh, sometimes, especially mill uh, millennials, adjusting to new life experiences, right? Uh, being a new father, uh, starting a new job um, or, or starting a business, right? I'm on that boat, right? You know, private practice, new father. Um, and then with the stigma, not feeling that you can talk about things, uh, definitely, you know, it, it takes a toll, right? Over time. So I try to connect with my clients uh, by being human, you know, and, and letting them know that, that the feelings that they have, the thoughts that they have, you know, these are valid experiences, they're normal. Um, we all go through them, you know, clients and therapists alike. That's important. And I have a son that um, I'm learning through him how simple guys' communication is compared to girls sometimes, like with the emotions. Um, and I'm like, sit with him and I'm like, how are you feeling about that? And it's, a little bit simpler. So do you feel that guys in session, are they able to articulate what they're feeling? Do they sometimes like have to go to a different place to kind of feel like, well, what am I feeling? Like, cause they, like you said, they've never really, you guys don't really kind of maybe pull from as emotional as women. So how is it for men to share those emotions? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You bring up a good point. Sometimes there's a, a lot of detours along the way, right? Um, but definitely, um, for me, I just try to, uh, keep it natural, you know, and, and go with the flow, um, and see how receptive, uh, the client is to certain conversations, uh, and just build from there. Um, because you're right. Sometimes there's kind of like that reservation to open up or maybe, uh, it's hard right for whatever reason to talk about certain things or they don't have like maybe the vocabulary right um so definitely just starting off from that beginning uh point that i mentioned like being solution focused seeing where you want to go uh, i tell people it's kind of like a an uber ride you know tell me where you're at tell me where you want to go 
and then we can talk about you know different ways to get there. Um, but uh, there isn't always like a, a linear path forward. Um, so that's kind of like in a nutshell, kind of like how I work with people uh, to navigate right some of those reservations that they may have along the way. Yeah, and I think when we're dealing with an issue like maybe say. Uh, for example, imposter syndrome, and it's a male who doesn't really understand maybe what he's feeling or what's going on. That can be a complex issue, right? And and he may end up, he may feel like he's a failure. He may feel like he's not good enough or that he doesn't measure up. And he may not have the ability to fully articulate that. Um, but then sort of digging up what's going on and kind of understanding the core issues there, I'm sure can be, can be incredibly helpful. Um, so for men who are, you know, how would you advise men who are seeking therapy or let's, let's say there's something going on emotionally or psychologically, but then there, maybe that stigma is preventing them from getting, getting the help that they need. What would you advise for them? What would be a path? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'd say that a, a path forward would consist of, uh, just being willing to have the the conversation. Like you don't have to come into therapy and know like what your specific goal is. Like I like to keep things solution focused, but I also realize that not everyone knows what they want from the beginning. A lot of times people know what they don't want, right? They don't want this, they don't want that, or they want to feel less less of, of a certain experience. Uh, they They want to manage it better. So like what I like to do in session is like, you know, what would you like to experience instead? What would you like to see uh, change uh, from us talking, you know, and kind of like shift the conversation that way? Because, uh, you know, recapping, right? A lot of people know what they don't want sometimes, uh, but getting them to identify what it is they're seeking, right, is super important. And a way to elicit that for me, at least in the work that I do, is asking people, you know, what are your values? You know, what's important to you, right? What what drives your decisions? Um, so those are some things that that I bring up. Uh, but you're right, stigma is a factor, um, and definitely for me, whenever it comes to the topic of of stigma, uh, I talk a lot, especially in my uh, social media content. Um, stigma as it relates to the Latinx uh, population. Uh, so that's something, you know, we could also touch on as well. Uh, but I hope that answers, you know, some of your questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it does. Absolutely. I, I just think there are so many barriers out there for men. So I think having conversations like this, where, you know, you bring up points like values and finding meaning and being able to kind of search for those things in that way, it makes a lot mm -hmm. of sense. Let's talk a little bit about um, <clears throat> men in the Latinx community. Tell us a little bit about that and your your passion there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, a little bit about that. Um, I'm Salvadorian American. Uh, my parents are immigrants. They came to this country. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a little bit of a bio, uh, to America in the late '80s, um, and just I, I like to open up about this because uh, the experiences that uh, a lot of people from Latin America have. Uh, have endured, right, play such a big uh, role in the mental health that is experienced in the family unit. Um, so uh, my parents came here in the 80s um, because there was a civil war in the time in El Salvador that had lasted over like a decade. Uh, thousands of people had died. Uh, they came, you know, fleeing the country, uh, were able to, you know, uh, find a path to, to residency and citizenship um, and, and build a new life here in America, right? But along with that uh, came the, the stressors of adjusting to a new way of life, uh, you know, experiences here in America, the language, uh, et cetera. So I, I bring that up uh, as context for just how stigma can affect uh, a lot of these uh, Latinx family, specifically families that uh, consist of like first or second generation like immigrant families, right? So uh, there's a concept um, in Spanish, it's called machismo. So essentially, it, it's a, a sense of masculine pride, kind of like what you were talking about earlier, right? What a man should be like, uh, you know, 
Don't talk about your emotions. Uh, you got to be strong. Uh, you got to brush things off. So um, a lot of times uh, families, especially like male figures, they've, you know, endured, you know, certain experiences in their homeland, right? And they don't talk about their emotions, right? And I tell people sometimes it's just the way that they cope with, with the stress that they went through, right? Um, obviously times are changing, right? Like since COVID, you know, mental health is becoming like uh, more normalized, right? We see a lot more conversation about it. Um, but definitely uh, when I talk to people, um, those are some things that, that I'll connect with people, especially like uh, Latinx uh, males, right? Um, having to deal kind of like with, with those stressors of, of you know, acculturation, uh, their parents adjusting to life in America, uh, dealing with these uh, masculine uh, like perceptions, these gender stereotypes and, and adjusting to, to life here, right? In the States and everything that comes with it. A lot more I can say, right? But definitely just some starting points that I wanted to mention on the on the topic. Yeah, it's really important for therapists to be um, culturally sensitive and what, you know, um, may have influenced certain things of like, this is my identity of who they feel like they are of like, I can't be attached to these emotions. That's not who I, I'm supposed to be. So um, how do they work with you to kind of maybe break through that to kind of say, okay, I can still be emotional, but still maybe honor my family in that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Cause um, sometimes, you know, it, you're, you're trying to find the right balance, right? And I kind of like circle back to the question of values that I had mentioned earlier. Um, and, you know, what's important to that person, to that individual and understanding that when it comes to family dynamics, you know, th there might be like things that you agree, you know, agree on and things that you don't agree on. Um, and being able to find a way to improve uh, relationship management is, is what I encourage when it comes to these like uh, uh, cultural like relationship conflicts, right? Um, uh, just the willingness to have empathy is is what I tell people uh, is is super important, um, especially when you're dealing with people who who come from a different country with a different set of values, a different way of life. Um, you know, empathy, right, is, is super important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is such an important topic. You know, in in mentioning honor and how honor relates to culture, and how that relates to being a man. I mean, those are very important value systems. And I, you know, one of the areas that I always try to explore with men is in addition to this cultural piece that you bring up, Hector, which is so important, but also I, I, I ask men what masculinity means to them. You know, what is their subjective understanding of masculinity? What does it mean to be a man, not only in the context of your culture um, and in your family, but then for you, because I think that there's so many you know, whether it's a cultural context or what we see on TV or even some distorted messages of masculinity in our own families, there's a lot of unhealthy uh, pictures of masculinity. And I think a lot of men, they're not really sure. They're not really sure to, where to go. They don't even know what masculinity even means to them. So I try to help, I try to help guys construct their own sense of individual masculinity. Mm -hmm. Um what are your thoughts on that? You know, kind of helping men pull from their culture, but also, hey, this is independently, this is what it means to me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, a good way to open up the conversation. You know, uh, what does it mean to you? Um, and um, not just what does it mean to you, but also like, um, how does it come into play in, in, in terms of behavior, right? The actions that you take, um, you know, uh, definitely super important to to have that conversation uh, because it kind of like uh, ties this this concept that people have to a lifestyle, you know, the the kind of life that you want to live, um, the person that you want to be. Um, definitely, um, you know, super important. Um, so yeah, I mean, like those are just some of the conversations that I bring up uh, with people. Um, to help them, right? To define what it is that 
that they're trying to achieve, right? Um, so yeah, I definitely, I'm definitely on board with that. Well, you're absolutely right. It, it ties into lifestyle and character. Like you mentioned the behaviors that they engage in and that ends up over time, it, you know, those behaviors, it ends up sort of creating the person that they are. And if it's some unhealthy sense of, uh, of what it means to be a man and this is how they live every day, over time, that's a lifestyle. Um, yeah. and, you know, and, and I, and I, I do see that. I do see that with, I see that with women too. I mean, that's not gender specific, but it makes yeah. a, lot of sense. a lot. No, of yeah, sense. yeah, definitely. You know, it's, it's behavioral conditioning, you know, it, it's, it, it kind of like boils down to that. So definitely like the actions, right. That you were saying, like the, the lifestyle that you have, uh, definitely plays a huge role. Like, what do you do with these belief systems, right? These, these stereotypes that you grew up with. Um, yeah. Like, what do you do with it? Are, are you going to, you know, uh, reinforce the cycle or are you going to like, uh, go a different path, you know? Absolutely. And it makes me also think too, this discussion, you mentioned you have a one-year-old daughter. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I've got, yeah. so I've got three kids. I've got two boys and then my middle is a daughter, but I, I always try to remind myself as a man, it's like, okay, I am the first male figure that my little girl is learning about men from, right? Like it's me, yeah. like when she's going to think of men, it's, me. I mean, we all know this. We don't have to be Freudian to, to know that there's, there's a link here. Right. Um, and vice yeah. versa, I think for, for little boys and their mothers, you know? So I, I'm going to ask you, what does it mean to you to be a father from the context mm. of like this idea of being, of being a man and being, you know, being a healthy man? What does that mean to you? Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely tying it back to that uh, conversation about lifestyle. Um, I think it also ties into, uh, you know, social learning theory, right? Kind of like uh, the modeling that, that we portray at home uh, to children is, is super important, you know, uh, because it's going to set the tone, right, for uh, the perceptions that, that she has, right, about the values that she's going to adopt, and the actions that she's gonna take. So um, yeah, it, it's been an experience, um, but definitely um, I'd say, you know, we're happy, you know, it's been an adjustment for sure. On top of just like private practice, you know, being a father, um, you know, fortunately my wife, she's a pediatric nurse. So that was a, a huge plus throughout the adjustment process. So um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I would also say, uh, not just like the individual modeling, right. Um, in terms of just my relationship with her, but also, you know, the gender, the gender stereotypes in, in a relationship, right. Mm -hmm. How I get along with my wife, you know, those are things that she's also seeing, you know, uh, that she's going to be observing throughout her life as well. So, you know, that's also another area where that plays out. Right. Um, so, yeah. So important. So important. Well, um, Hector, this has been such an informative conversation. Um, you know, thank you so much for, for, for sharing all of these nuggets of knowledge and expertise. How can, uh, how can folks find you, um, and contact you, um, you know, if they want some services or, or, you know, maybe they want to watch some of your content, um, what's good ways for them to, Find you. Yeah, yeah. So you can go to my website, ariseconnections.org, and you can book an appointment uh, from my website. Um, and maybe if you're not, you know, uh, completely decided on therapy, I do offer free consultations as well, available on my website. Uh, in terms of uh, content, you can also go to uh, my Instagram uh, at Arise Connections, where I, you know, post uh, content on men's mental health, stigma. Um, so yeah, definitely another place to, to connect as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Hector, for, uh, for joining us. This was a fantastic episode. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here today on the Counseling Podcast with Dr. Jacqueline and Dr. Stokes. Please take this time to thank yourself for putting in the work if this episode impacted you in any way, let us know with a loving and honest review. If you have any questions or want to continue the conversation from today, you can reach out to us at 
thecounselingpodcast at gmail.com and we can answer your questions right here on the show. Or you can find Dr. Jacqueline and Dr. Stokes on Instagram at docjacqueline and at Dr. Jeremiah Stokes.